But to begin with, uh, I would like to focus on the uh, trans cathode aortic wall replacement. So, just, sir, just can you elaborate more on this particular topic, sir? Yes. Uh, just today only uh, we had a healthy discussion mm -hmm. with a group of people about this modality of treatment which is comparatively new. Mm -hmm. In 2002, Dr. Alan Kribier performed first trans catheter aortic wall replacement and this was done on a patient whose life expectancy was only one day. So you can imagine with what courage mm -hmm. in such a sick patient who was likely to survive only for one day, Dr. Alan Kribier performed this procedure and totally new for the first time. Mm -hmm. And thereafter, of course, he innovated and the disease under the, the, uh, the device underwent a mm -hmm. lot of modification mm -hmm. and currently hundreds of patients have undergone this form of treatment. Mm -hmm. So we were having discussion about its applicab applicability in India. Mm -hmm. And um, I think there are lots of shortcomings for that. Mm -hmm. First of all, this is a disease of elderly mm -hmm. and very elderly. Right. And uh, in our country, the life expectancy is at least 10 years shorter than in the Westerners. Mm -hmm. So we don't see this disease as much as they see. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, this device is uh, expensive and therefore the treatment is expensive. Right. The cost can go as high as about 20 lakhs of rupees. Mm -hmm. I think it is beyond the affordability of number of people. Only a very few people in fact will be able to afford this kind of treatment. Mm -hmm. So this is a serious limitation. Mm -hmm. On top of it, uh, we find that the inclination to undergo such surgery even in affordable group mm -hmm. is much less. The reason is that uh, Hindu philosophy is different. The elderly person thinks mm -hmm. that now I have finished my worldly job in this world and therefore there is a time for me to go mm -hmm. and uh, I should go peacefully and should not undergo any kind of mutilations and morbidities on my body and therefore I should go peacefully without any treatment, whatever is my destiny. And the second thing is that in a foreign country, an elderly man uh, has to carry out all his day-to-day -day activity by himself without any support. Like for example, he has to drive his own car, mm -hmm. he, he has to do uh, shoveling of ice and mowing his lawns and all those things by himself and he has to look after himself because that society is different. In our society, the elderly patient is looked after by the family with warmth and love. So the quality of life is not as bad for an Indian patient mm -hmm. because of a human and emotional support as it is as bad in the United States. Right, sir. So, sir, um, if you see, uh, it is a very costly affair around uh, approximately 20 lakh. So, do you foresee that uh, the affordability is the major hurdle for implementation of such a practice in India? You see, uh, apart from that, uh, the, the issue is that uh, uh, affordability and also the priorities. In a country where we have limited resources, uh, the resources are, should be well spent and there are certain priorities which will take over life. Say for example, young men suffering from tuberculosis or infectious diseases will require who has a, a more uh, useful life to live on should be treated uh, in a priority basis. Right. So if my source resources are limited, then I will have to prioritize and aortic valve replacement for a very elderly man mm -hmm. who has a very limited amount of life left behind mm -hmm. is not going to be a priority. Right, sir. So, sir, um, considering all the um, parameters, all the factors, uh, uh, what uh, do you feel that the future of a uh, transcatheter pulmonary aortic valve replacement will be? Well, the day in which uh, this will be applicable to people suffering from rheumatic heart disease, who have aortic valve disease due to rheumatic disease, that is a younger population. Mm -hmm. Then I think it would be a very useful and correct directions to move in because they have a long life to go and they are in their productive years of life. So those patients will be benefited a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't think today we have an indication to apply this treatment in aortic valve disease in young due to rheumatic cause, okay. but someday it may be. Mm -hmm. And I think in future with modifications, experience and expertise, it may be applicable. 
okay great yeah. sir so sir what is the uh, that key message you would like to give to the practitioners for uh, uh, going for such kind of practice i would say that the person who is comparatively young like in 60s or 50s and uh, who still has left a fairly good amount of useful life mm -hmm. that those kind of patients uh, we should offer that an issue of affordability i think once the indian manufacturers jumps into the process of manufacturing then i think the device will be much cheaper mm -hmm. and uh, like the i'm anticip i'm anticipating that if the indian entrepreneurs if they go into this mm -hmm. they will be able to give us the device in 5 lakhs of rupees okay. and then i think so many patients i'll be able to treat okay okay thank you sir thank you so much for your time and valuable input sir okay. thank you Yes, uh, just today only uh, we had a healthy discussion mm -hmm. with a group of people about this modality of treatment which is comparatively new.